Hello and welcome. My name is Sonia and I am so excited to be with you here today along with two other members of the CK12 science team, Lauren and Heather. Um, this is the content we're going to cover today. We have a very limited time and we're going to stay really focused on just providing you with specific tips and tools that can be easily implemented right away. So even I'm imagining in your class tomorrow. Um, we've all been science teachers and we really are excited to help you engage your students with CK12 science resources. Our goal here today is just to kind of highlight the what, the where, and the how. So what do we have, which is a lot, um, where you can get it. So I'm gonna talk a lot about where to click, okay? how you can easily access and share this material. And then lastly, we're really gonna focus on just inspiring you and giving you ideas on how our materials can increase student engagement. So thank you so much for joining us and let's get started. A few things um, to note is that we are gonna present the content first and then we're gonna um, answer all your questions at the end of the presentation. Just know, even though we have a very short, it's a shorter webinar today, around 30, 30 or so minutes, um, we, will, we will stay on and answer all of your questions, no matter how long that that takes. So your questions will not go unanswered. Um, using Zoom, just a few tips. There's two different windows. There's a Q&A window, and that's where members of our team will be answering your specific questions. And then there's also a chat window. And that's where we'd like you to put any kind of um, anything you want to um, share with the rest of the CK12 um, community or anyone else on this webinar. So if you have ideas of how you use the materials that we're showing um, and you like to share that with the teachers, um, please use the chat window. And then if you have any specific questions for our team that you would like answered, please use that Q&A window. All right. So um, everything that I show you here today will be able to be accessed with just one place, the CK12 homepage at www.ck12.org. So this is the only web address that you need to access everything that I'm gonna show you today. And with that, I am gonna go live on our site at www.ck12.org. Okay. So here we are on the homepage. I always say there is no place like home. And um, we will start with what subjects we have for science. So on the toolbar, I'm gonna click here on subjects. And that is going to open up everything we have at CK12 and we are gonna talk science today. So um, a few things to note that our core science content is focused on middle school and high school level. So we have earth science, life science, and physical science at the middle school level, in biology, chemistry, and physics at the high school level. We have some, um, a biology college book that we're gonna be briefly highlighting today. And for all you elementary school teachers out there, I do want um, to quickly show you, we have a limited, um, um, collection of K through five science flex books that I really encourage you to uh, take a look at. And please note that really one of the, I think the coolest things about all of the content on CK12, including this collection of K through five books, is they can be easily customized, meaning you can add to them and really tailor them to your, to your class. So um, I just wanted to take some time to note that. So back to our subjects. Um, I am the physics content manager at CK12. So I'm gonna open up the physics flex book right now by clicking on physics. But I do want you to know that it's not time to get up and get a snack just because you don't teach physics, that everything that I show you here, the structure and layout of this book and the lessons and where I say to click, so on and so forth, is actually reflective of all of our branches of science, whether it be the chemistry, bio, and so on. So um, you'll see as I show you physics and Lauren shows you bio and Heather shows you some of the other subjects that um, they are very similar in structure. So here is our physics flexbook 2.0 and it's just kind of reflective of a, um, you know, 
table of contents of a normal textbook, about 20 chapters, and there's probably about five to 10 lessons per chapter. And so I'm just gonna kind of click here on chapter three, and you can see that I have a few lessons in one of my favorite um, topics to discuss, which is force and Newton's laws of motion. So one thing I just want to highlight that I think is really unique and wonderful about CK-12's content is each of the lessons is very focused on one concept. And it really provides multiple ways to explore and engage with this one concept. So let's take a look at what happens when I click on the concept of weight. So I'm brought to this page we call the start page. And that's because there's this nice big green um, icon that says start. But what I'd like to show you here is that there are many ways to learn and engage with this concept of weight. And I'll come back to these in just a moment. So let's start. So this is the lesson that is focused on the concept of weight. And this looks like all of our lessons throughout our science content. So it opens with a really kind of fun image to get the students curious and relates it to kind of a real world application. And you'll see that as a theme throughout our science content at CK12. Really in the science content um, team, we try to take every opportunity to kind of address those students who are like, when will I ever need to know this? When will I ever use this? Where do I ever see this in my own life? So um, these real world applications are found throughout our science content. As I scroll down, um, we have, you know, kind of a, a description of mass versus weight and some content describing, um, you know, the acceleration due to gravity and providing some, some equations. And then because it's a digital textbook and we really are trying to engage the students in the exploration and discovery of the content, we offer a simulation embedded right in the reading. So this simulation um, poses the big question, how much weight could you lift on the moon? And I could imagine you know, having a discussion around this, um, maybe a, a think pair share or, um, a variety of ways of just this big question can be used. And then you can launch the simulation. By pressing play, you'll see kind of this beautiful animation that really draws the student into an, a real world scenario. And it has some further guiding questions that, you know, continues to kind of make the students curious and um, and go deeper into, let's say, the difference between mass and weight and how much weight could you lift on the moon. So in this scenario, we're in an astronaut cha um, training chamber, which is actually a really hard thing to replicate, let's say, in the classroom or at home now that many of us are distance learning. Now, each simulation, I want to let you know, we have a large collection of over 100 simulations and they all have the same structure. So they have that opening kind of video. And then this is what we lovingly refer to as the sandbox. So it's meant for the students to kind of jump in and explore. There's almost always a few sliders and then some responsive animations and graphs. This, um, this particular sim, you can adjust the mass and this is really fun. You can actually change their location from the moon to Mars to even Saturn's moon Dione. So based on these locations, you can run the simulation and the animations respond as well as the graph. Now, one thing I'd like you to know is that all our entire collection of science simulations are mathematically accurate. So you can actually use this simulation to derive the gravitational constant on Dione or Mars, and it actually is mathematically accurate. We can zoom into the graph and we can compare to, run, um, to, to um, trials. So there's many ways to kind of use this simulation. And lastly, I just wanted you to know that every simulation ends with 
four more real world questions. I really found as a high school teacher that it's hard to kind of come, come up with these like compelling big questions that are rooted in these real world experiences and applications. So I really want you to know that CK12 has a huge bank of over you know 400 at, of these real world questions. So at the end of every simulation. And they have these beautiful animations, you know, does the strength of gravity get weaker when you go up a mountain? So I could imagine saying, you know, for homework, pick one of these real world questions, investigate it, come back with a few facts to share with your classmates. Um, that would be kind of a fun assignment where they have a little bit of choice and it allows them to take this concept of weight and further apply it in a new situation. Okay, so here's the fun part. We are now in this simulation. I've been engaged in this concept of weight. Let me click and I am dropped right back, boom, into my lesson. Where now I can take what I just discovered and I can um, apply it here with examples. I have a summary, some review questions, and then I have a video right here of, I'm sure many of you are fans, Veritasium and Derek Muller about the difference between mass and weight. And what I really, I think appreciate and probably you do too, is our students don't have to go to many different places, a million different clicks. Everything is here in this one nice lesson. So based on their new understanding and experience with the concept of weight, they can practice by clicking on this view practice and Heather's going to talk more about that. So um, if I click here, it's going to launch me into a, 10 practice questions and students can kind of um, assess if they really understand what they just learned. And then also I'm just going to highlight a few things that can be accessed on our toolbar. So right here, if you click on this icon, um, a toolbar will open up right in the lesson. And um, we're gonna talk more about insights, but based on the practice that I just showed you, you as the teacher can actually have insights onto how the student engaged on this lesson and how they did on their practice. And if we go down here to related content, I'd like to highlight that um, in addition to what is accessed just simply within the reading text, we offer a variety of other modalities that can be used to um, explore the concept of weight. So there's some videos. This one's a TED Ed video, Would You Weigh Less in an Elevator? There's that simulation again. And then there's what we call a Plix Interactive. So I'm going to open this up. And I think this is important um, to note because our simulations are formally labeled as physics and chemistry, but our PLIX tools, um, we actually have for every branch of science. So you'll find them for earth science, physical science, biology, and so forth. A PLIX interactive is a very simple way of interacting. So you just kind of drag the red dot here and you can see you move the astronaut to different locations and his weight changes. And then there's about five questions that um, kind of assess student understanding on this concept of mass and weight. So another way to really engage your student in the concept. So going back to the lesson, um, I am going to now um, kind of show you a few just tricks that uh, might help you kind of navigate the site. So here I am on the lesson of weight. I'm going to click back here. Um, it's kind of like a breadcrumb to get me back to that table of contents of the book. Okay. Now, let's say you didn't want to have to go through the whole table of contents. You're just wondering what we have on the concept of weight. A trick I wanted to share with you today is the search bar here. You can simply type in the term, or the, the, what you'd like to search for. And you see here, I'm now back on that lesson page. So that's kind of just a nice um, trick there. And one kind of trick that I always use that I'd like to share is anytime you click on the CK12 icon here, um, you take you back to home. So here's back to our home page. Now, hopefully, like I said, we're kind of keeping it very um, like a broad overview. Um, but I I hope you're excited about those simulations and clicks that are found throughout our content. So I'm just going to end my segment um, by showing you where you can access those tools aside from um, 
embedded in the lessons and that related content. So CK12 homepage, if you click on explore here, it's gonna open everything we have in addition to the subjects. And here you can see I click on simulations and I have, as I said, formally labeled as physics and chemistry, but please, no matter what science subject you teach, hop on. I, I think you find something that you can use. And um, we have just this beautiful collection of um, this very streamlined, right, um, structure, big question, sliders in the sandbox, and then finally kind of these real world applications with big questions that can all be found on our simulations browse page. And then in, uh, lastly, I showed you the plicks. So just explore, those are simulations, our plicks interactives. And you can see here, we offer those for all branches, biology, chemistry, physics, earth science, and life science throughout the sciences. So um, with that, I'm going to now hand it over to my colleague, Lauren, and she's going to highlight some of the same things I just showed you, um, but through the lens of, of our biology content. So you can take it away, Lauren, whenever you're ready. Thank you, Sonia. Hello, everyone. So I'm going to start sharing my screen now from the home page of CK12. And what I'm going to do is show you some lessons and content resources within specifically our biology domain. I'm going to start by going to the Biology Flexbook 2.0. I'm going to access that through the Subjects tab up here. And you'll find the Science Flexbook 2.0 that Sonia had shown you a moment ago. I'm going to go into our Biology Flexbook, and you'll see here the table of contents very similar structure as the physics flexbook 2.0 in biology we have 13 chapters and you can expand and open the chapters to find the different concepts to find what you're looking for you can also use the search tab here that sonia had pointed out in the physics book so for instance if we wanted to look for resources related to homeostasis You'll find different lesson reads that are related to this topic, maybe a Plix Interactive, some videos or study guides. So that's a great way to navigate. However, I'm gonna go back now to the table of content through this toolbar on the side and select our Flexbook here. And I'm going to access one of our chapter four lessons in molecular biology for mutation. So we're gonna to go to this concept in mutation. And you'll find the start page here where there's other ways to learn, which include different videos and study guides along with Plix interactives. These also can all be accessed through the lesson directly through related content that I'll point out once we get into the lesson itself. So let's enter that lesson now by selecting the start button and it will take you to the mutation lesson where you'll find a very similar structure to what the physics lessons that Sonia had just shown you. You'll find a real world introduction related to this concept on mutations, what causes albinism and some other really interesting and curious questions for the students to engage with this particular concept, followed by the content and various embedded images and videos that you can also share with your students. In addition to that, you'll find at the end a summary and review questions that are part of all of our lessons within the Flexbook 2.0. Go back to the top here. In the top right, you'll find the toolbar. And in the toolbar, you can access that related content, which includes those Plix interactives, real world applications, video, and study guides. Also too, we have our view practice here in the bottom right, which includes that adaptive practice that Sonia had mentioned also in the physics to just test their understanding of this concept. In addition, the insights you can access if you have set up a classroom, you can actually go through finding more about the performance of your students and Heather's gonna go through that in a little more detail shortly. In addition, 
Also, we have our Flexi here. This is a really great tool to point out to your students to help the students on their learning journey with notifications and options to ask questions in the various concepts that you have. All right, so in addition to the Biology Flexbook 2.0, we also offer a Life Science Flexbook 2.0 for middle school students that I also wanted to show you how to access as well. So I'm gonna go back to the home page of CK12 in this icon here in the top left, I'm gonna select that and go to the subjects tab. And you'll find the Life Science Flexbook 2.0 here. I'm gonna select that. And you'll see the various concepts and chapters for this Flexbook there that you can explore with your students. In addition, we also have an advanced offering depending on what subject and what level you're teaching in a College Human Biology Flexbook 2.0 that I just wanted to uh, show you how to access and some uh, key things about that that might be different from what you might find in bio and the Life Science Flexbook 2.0. So I'm gonna go back to our homepage and under subjects, you'll find the college offerings and I'm gonna select College Human Biology here. And that will take you to the Flexbook 2.0 for this College Human Biology book. It has some of the same topics you might find in Biology Flexbook 2.0, but in more detail. Also with more of a human perspective lens to the lessons and some very valuable real world applications through the use of case studies. For instance, if you go to chapter five in genetics, the chapter starts with a case study that you may find that you can explore and engage your students further with. This case study is followed through the chapter, ending with a conclusion here that you can debrief with your student and make sense of it depending on what chapter you're on. All right, so I'm going to transition now to sharing some more specific ideas to generate engagement in your biology classroom using some of the resources we have. I'm gonna go back to the Biology Flexbook 2.0 and take a look at a lesson that you might visit during your cell transport unit. So depending where you are, you might be able to use this now in your classroom. So I'm gonna go back to the home page, go to subjects and biology. And if you enter chapter two, you will find various lessons in this cell transport. For, for instance, you might visit first the diffusion lesson, which I will access through the start page. Some familiar demonstrations and labs in this unit that you might actually do in your classroom as examples might include simple observations with food coloring and a glass of water. Also maybe the egg inquiry lab where you're removing the shell from the egg and then testing the different environments of hypertonic, hypotonic with different solutions. Particularly now if you're working virtually, these are demonstrations you could set up in your classroom to actually have your students make predictions of and then discuss as a whole class. Another great activating strategy to engage students prior to beginning the cell transport unit and going more in depth into some of these lessons actually includes some of our simulations. Our CK12 simulation in chemistry on speedy smells is a really great example of this. So I'm gonna actually access that simulation now from our home page. And Sonia had shown this through the Explore tab. So I'm gonna follow that same navigation and enter our simulations and go to chemistry simulations. And you can search here in the search bar, any of those concepts. And I'm gonna search for diffusion. And our speedy smell simulation comes up. And like all of our simulations, we have some great driving questions that you can use to activate your students' prior knowledge. So it's a really wonderful way before you give too much detail away to see what prior knowledge they have using some of these driving questions. A video to help give some real life connections with this before you make uh, some more connections with what's happening in the cell, this is something they may be able to relate to uh, before that more complex system is actually explored more in your class. 
In addition, following the video is a great experimental setup here that you can do virtually with your students. So you can test different smelly items like maybe fish and flowers. They give the molecular mass and then you can test with your subject person here. Prior to actually allowing the simulation to play, it's a really good strategy to have your students make some predictions and maybe discuss why they think what's gonna happen. This is also a really easy setup that they can do at home with some of maybe these uh, items like an orange and, a, and perfume can be tested and some data can be collected to be shared with the class at a later time and even compare to the simulation results. And as Sonia mentioned too, there's some other real world examples that end all our simulations, like why do onions make us cry to help engage the students further. All right, so I think this is a good time to pass uh, things off to another content member in science, Heather, who actually leads the science uh, chemistry content as well as product development. So I'm gonna have Heather take over now and describe some of those product tools. Great, thanks, Lauren. I'll go ahead and switch to my screen here quick. Great, so I'm just gonna go through kind of a, a big picture items that can be used across all of our science content. And the first thing to note is with our Science Flexbook 2.0, lessons and courses, they're all customizable, which has two really good benefits. One, you can customize it to whatever you want for your specific class, but you can also combine lessons across different courses into a single course. Uh, however, that being said, <laughs> you don't have to do that. These are fine out of the box. You can assign whatever lessons you want without having to do any customization, but that option is available. There are specific webinars that address this further that I encourage you to check out if you're interested in optimizing for the customization experience. The next thing is our adaptive practice, which is also customizable. Uh, the adaptive practice, Sonia hit on this a little bit, but this is at the end of every single lesson. And if you assign that lesson to the student, by default, adaptive practice is going to be assigned to that student. Uh, the adaptive practice, works by having students do 10 questions and the questions get progressively harder as the student works through it. If a student struggles or gets a question incorrect, they get a second chance to try that question as well. So it's really about having a growth mindset and learning throughout that process. If you choose to customize this, you can create a quiz and all of those questions are available to you as teachers to edit, modify as you wish. If, if it's a quiz, it will not uh, work in the same adaptive manner because you've adjusted things to fit your class, which is great. However, it just doesn't have that same uh, questions getting harder as they go through it. It's more of a typical quiz model. Uh, this is a great tool for both you and your students to be more engaged in your reading experience. So it allows students to annotate as they go. They can highlight as well as make notes and all of that is collected on the right-hand side as shown here. So this is an exciting new feature that came out a couple of months ago. So it's really new, but it's a great way to get some insight into your students, especially with uh, COVID and so many students at home. It's really hard to know where your students are at and what their experience is like. So this gives you a lot of insight into your students, even though they aren't in the classroom. In this tool, which you can access on the right hand side as Sonia was showing you, or in the top menu bar, you get uh, insights as to where your students are learning and how well they're learning the material. So on the left hand side here of the map, uh, of the lesson, you see a graph. That graph is telling you where the student is most engaged as they're moving through the lesson. So if you wanna see if kids are really <laughs> reading the lesson and actually getting to the end, you can see if there's a huge drop off as they go. Maybe all your students are only reading the first paragraph. So you kind of can get a feel for how engaged they really are in the material. It also gives you some insight as to how well your students are doing on the top. You see proficient is saying that most of your students are performing at a proficient level, their engagement, how much time they're spending. 
And then it also will give you some key insights as to recommendations for what you could do to help improve student performance. Another helpful teacher tool are our reports. Uh, so this enables you to see what students are completing, what they aren't, helps you fill out your grade book, et cetera. So uh, for anything that can be graded, percentages are added. Otherwise, for things where you just assign something for them to complete, that's what the check mark is showing. You can also dive into individual students, as you see on the right, and get a more holistic picture of that particular student's experience. So a great part about being an online tool is that we are able to easily translate. So for English language learners, or if you're in an immersion school and you want the text to be in a different language, you can easily translate it by going to the bottom of any lesson. Oops, it got covered up. <laughs> Sorry, there's a little book covering it. But beneath that, it, there should be a button. Uh, it'll be at the bottom of your screen. If you scroll down on any lesson, a student can go in and switch the language. As you see on the right, this one is in Spanish. There's another important thing to note about Spanish. We have actually had, have worked with partner organizations to translate uh, all of, or a significant number of our science texts into Spanish. So you can access those books by going to the related content. And the difference between that and the Google Translate is that this is the, uh, Books that are in Spanish were done by Spanish speakers. And then the last kind of thing to note is if you do need to download PDFs to uh, print work or need to print anything off, you can do that with any of our content. Uh, so starting with the entire book, <laughs> if you wanna download the entire book on the far left side, you can see there that uh, at the beginning of the course, you can click on choose and download that PDF. You can do an individual lesson as well by clicking on the toolbar. That's what's shown in the middle. Uh, so if you click on the toolbar, you will see uh, beneath add to the library. If you go down to it is download PDF. Uh, and then also you can download a quiz from adaptive practice. <clears throat> so to do that, uh, when you click on to assign the adaptive practice, it actually shows you there what we're seeing here and you can click download worksheet. So those are some of the key tools that you can use in any science course. And then I think we're gonna go to Q&A. Well, Heather, let me jump in for a second. Hi, this is Lindsay. I've been helping to type some answers in the Q&A and um, Katie has been answering some questions as well. But I'm gonna give just a little bit of kind of general information about CK12 while our science team reviews the questions you guys are typing in the Q&A. So it's a good time to post any questions that you still have or anything that you would like these ladies to demo. Put that in the Q&A window, please. Um, otherwise, let me just give you a, a few additional tips, um, especially for those of you who are still just getting used to CK12. So if we flip the screen, you're going to see that we have an overview page at ck12.org slash overview. Um, Heather, do you mind? Can you? There we go. Um, ck12.org slash overview. You'll find this in the footer. You'll also find this in our explore menu. Uh, but this is a great page to uh, kind of synthesize all the information that you saw today. If you're wanting to know more about our Flexbook 2.0 platform, more about adaptive practice or our interactives, um, we have additional information and resources and even videos um, of teachers and students who are using these talking about the power of these tools. So um, that's a great place to go. And then there's also a PDF flyer that you can download for those of you who are trying to share this information with others, or you wanna like slip one to an administrator, um, that, that's a great resource for you as well. Um, next, I wanna show you that we do have a help desk available to you at ck12.org slash help. And when you go to the help center, um, you can identify yourself pro probably as a teacher or a parent. And we have a lot of great information there. So as you're thinking about, um, you know, how do I create a flex book or how do I make a quiz or classes? Um, all of these uh, keywords should pop up in the help desk. Um, additionally, there was, I know there was some conversation about learning management systems 
And we have some great information on Google Classroom and Canvas and Schoology um, in there. So if you need additional help, this is one great place to go. And then also on our webinars page, um, which is ck12.org slash webinars. I don't think we have a slide for it, but um, we're gonna be posting a copy of this video. It'll be up within the tw next 24 hours. And so if you need to review this at all, or you need to share it with colleagues, it will be available to you. And then we also wanted to mention that we have a certified educator program. Um, if you go to ck12.org slash certified, um, you can learn more about our certified educator program. Uh, like everything on CK12, it is, it is completely free. And as of August, it became a self-paced program. So you are welcome to join a class at any time. Um, again, you find out more about it on this page, uh, but you will join a class and there are 10 lessons that you'll work your way through in our Flexbook and answer some questions using our CK12 system. Um, and it can help guide you just if you want to have deeper knowledge of CK12 and perhaps even get your feet wet doing things like um, customizing a flexbook or creating your own or adding quizzes and, and, and using, you know, learning management systems, any of that kind of stuff, go, we go in great detail at ck12.org slash certified. Um, then a couple other things, uh, we are active on the social medias. So uh, if you are a Facebook user and you haven't already uh, followed us on Facebook or liked us, whatever it is on Facebook, uh, you can do that at CK12 Foundation. Um, and then we've got Twitter as well, that is uh, a little more active. We announced a lot of our webinars and upcoming um, product features and things like that. And we are uh, at the CK12 Foundation on Twitter as well. Um, so we do wanna thank you for your time. Again, we're gonna stay on and, and, and go back over any of these questions that are, that are lining up in the Q&A window. Um, but on this, uh, the, the next screen here, um, the, yeah, thank you screen. A couple of you were asking where to email to get some additional answers to your questions and support at ck12.org is the place to send your questions. Um, there again is the at CK12 foundation for um, our social media handles. So my final plug before I kick it back over to the science um, ladies is that we have a request to, um, if you have a couple minutes and you're wondering how you can help kind of pay it forward for our free resource, we are asking that anybody who can, can donate their time here, leave us some feedback on EdTech Impact. They are an independent review platform for EdTech products. Uh, we want to show the world how our platform impacts the world of education, and we would love to feature your experiences with CK12. Um, so I'm going to, I think somebody, my colleague just put it in the window, the EdTech review link. I'm going to post it one more time here. It's going to get buried quickly. Um, but if you can uh, make sure to go to this link and complete that review, um, that would be really helpful to our team and getting the word out. Okay, um, I'm going to, I don't know who we want to toss it to, Sonia, Lauren, Heather, you guys. Yeah, I'll take it. I'm Sonia. Awesome. Again. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to let you, if you need to share your screen or do whatever you need to do. Okay, perfect. So um, during this time, I just want to thank you guys. You were so engaged um, on the chat and the Q&A. And I, like I said, I um, will not leave here without answering all of your questions. So a few things that I noticed. Um, one was someone just said, can you do that translation thing live, right? That Heather was talking about. So why don't I go ahead and just show you very quickly. I'm on a biology um, lesson because Lauren did such a great job of demoing biology. I had to go and see more. So I'm gonna scroll to the very bottom. Again, this can be done by any lesson throughout all of CK12. And this is such a fun thing to demo. And you could see here on the bottom right corner, the little G um, Google icon. So we use um, Google Translate and basically you can select a language. And so let's have, um, I don't know, let's see, Icelandic. And right there, all of the um, text content, you can see the videos do not translate, um, but the text content does. And a few of you shared on the chat that your students, um, I believe someone said that they had a student who used the Russian translate option and found it very beneficial. So um, definitely, like I said, with one click, um, I encourage you and your students to check that out. The second kind of grouping of questions I had was about adaptive practice. 
So um, why don't we, again, kind of just go through that a little more slowly. Um, and as Lindsay said, you know, if you need to drop off, that's okay. I'm just kind of um, staying on to, to answer these questions. So from a lesson, you can always launch adaptive practice on the bottom right corner for this view practice. Okay, so I'm gonna click there. And then I'm gonna um, kind of preview because I'm in a teacher mode here. Um, this is what adaptive practice looks like. Now, why do we call it adaptive? So basically we have a bank of questions and the system is an intelligent system. So in essence, as the students answer correctly, the questions um, get harder and harder. And as they um, answer incorrectly, they are offered up kind of resources, videos, um, and so on, different um, ways to kind of maybe go back and review the content. So the nice part, as you all know, with students is they get immediate feedback. So um, here, I'm gonna check my answer, I get it wrong. Um, and I have Flexi here to kind of help me and um, I can try again. And the idea is that I have immediate feedback. There's, um, kind of a variety of different tools within this adaptive practice um, that I can use as a student. So that's just something um, um, to note about adaptive practice and leave your questions in the q and I believe that's just, um, I think that you wanted just to see it demoed. So, um, so that, um, Hopefully I answered that question. Um, the sec another question I um, saw was about answer keys. So um, basically in all of our Flexbook, um, all of our Flexbook 2.0, so I'm gonna go back to the subject. So any of these Flexbooks, and I'm just gonna click on physics because um, like I said, I'm most comfortable on the physics content manager, but um, let's click on a chapter. So basically, um, all of our answer keys can be found on the first lesson um, within the chapter. So this is lesson 2.1. So you can imagine 3.1, 4.1. And what I'm gonna do, so here I am in 2.1. I'm gonna click on tools, okay? And I'm gonna click on resources, all right? And this is gonna provide me with both a downloadable Word doc and PDF of all the answer keys for every lesson's review question and explore more. So right here, the review and the explore more questions, um, there's an answer key there. So that hopefully, I think um, that's the kind of stuff that why you why you stay on the full webinar, right? Those are the kind of things that, that um, you might not have known. So hopefully that helps you out and that's across the sciences. Um, there were some NGSS questions that I saw. So um, are we NGSS aligned, right? That's like the big, the big question. So the deal is we, um, we have, we've not created any of these contents specifically for NGSS, but we do correlate. So we took the standards and we took all of our content that we had already had and we kind of like worked backwards and um, so, and basically tagged it to NGSS standards. So we always formally say it was correlated, but it wasn't, you know, um, created for NGSS. Now, what I like to say is, you know, good teaching is good teaching. So as far as, um, as I showed before, there's real world examples at the start of every um, lesson. There are actually um, related content um, that have, you know, real world articles. And then I believe truly that our bank of simulations are just a beautiful example of, if you will, like phenomena, they could be used as phenomena. So, um, so that's just something to note that like really throughout CK12 content, um, you'll see just these real world applications um, everywhere. And that's really um, kind of tied into the, the, um, the theme of NGSS. The second piece that I would like to note for NGSS is that our content can easily be mixed and matched. So um, Heather noted earth science, right? A big piece of NGSS is this earth science piece. And we have a beautiful um, kind of bank of earth science content. So let me show you. And I think I even saw a question of, do we have high school science content? We do. So let me click on the earth science. 
and just kind of show you this. So this right now is at the middle school level, okay? But if you wanted to access at the high school level, you hit unrelated. Again, this is throughout all of our branches. You can click on related and you can see our other offerings for earth science. And here you see CK12 earth science for high school. So I believe I saw a question there for that. So we do offer here. Now, I just wanna kind of show you what I mean about mix and match. So we're back on the earth science book um, here. And let's say I go to, I don't know, seafloor. And let's say I wanna add this lesson on the seafloor into my physics book, because it's like an integrated earth science physics class. We can easily do that. So basically the toolbar, right? Your best friend here gives you so many options of ways to kind of use our content. And you see here, add to Flexbook. So you can actually, that's what we're talking about customizing is you can actually add this lesson to let's say the physics Flexbook and kind of combine that earth science content um, throughout the physics, the standing physics book. Then further, um, you know, you can customize and there's full webinars on how to customize, but basically you can reorder the lessons and you can even edit the content and the images. So just note that um, in kind of this spirit of NGSS and this like cross curricular right connections that our platform allows you to easily put a chemistry lesson in a physics book or a bio lesson right in a um, earth science book and vice versa. And um, that can be done all with just a simple click. Okay. Um, I can't see. So let's see if um, any other questions, Lindsay, I know you're or, um, someone who can see the, the Q&A for some reason I can't see. Um, let me see. We've been answering a bunch of them, um, but they are coming in quickly. A lot of people are having questions just um, about the content that we offer. So um, for instance, like life science for high school um, and lots of questions about elementary content, if we're going to be developing any more resources or, you know, simulations and things like that for elementary. I can speak to that a little. Okay. So on that we have, so all of our courses that end with science are technically for middle school, technically being a strong word. I think any of them would work as well for high school life science and uh, physical science and things like that. So I used to teach physical science in high school and I would use our physical science book without a problem. Uh, so I think it's more kind of asking yourself where they are in your uh, in their <clears throat> uh, curriculums. So if it's a ninth or 10th grade course, any of those course, any of that content could also work. I would just kind of skim through it and see what what you think of the reading level. It's a slightly easier reading level, but most of the lessons will be similar. There are just a bigger breadth of lessons in physics and chemistry and biology are a little more in depth and uh, a broader offering. Uh, and then as far as our elementary school or elementary content, right now there's nothing in the works, but it is something we are exploring. We do have those available. It might be a great thing to try and customize. It is not something right now that we're really targeting though. So I think that kind of covers that. Uh, were there any other things on that, Lindsay? Um, a lot of questions coming in about our health content. Um, can, you, can you speak to those flex books of what um, our users might be able to find in there? Sure. Uh, so we have a variety of options for that. One is if you actually go into our biology course, I don't know if you're going to do that, Sonia, and you, there's an entire section on human biology, which has a plethora of lessons that you could pick from. Sorry, it's actually in the biology book itself was the first one. Uh, yeah, so if you scroll down to the bottom, human biology, you'll see in, if you click on that, there are a bunch of lessons that you could use for that. It's not really health, but I recognize. There is, if we look back at that main uh, course offerings at the top, you will see, sorry, subjects. <laughs> you can also, there are some health ones within the biology stuff, but also if you look at more, there's a health, health book there that is available as well. 
So if you scroll down under more, under engineering, there's a health flex book available. Yeah. So those are two of the health books currently available. A um, couple questions about um, webinars and access. So I think Sonia, if you're guiding the screen, can you go to, up to that explore menu? Um, I really like using this explore menu to get easy access to things. So if you just go down to the webinars link on the explore menu, or it's ck12.org slash webinars, but we are recording this webinar and within the next 24 hours, probably late tonight, um, the, the recording will show up in our archived webinar section. So if you scroll down, you can see um, that we've got different sections. Somebody just asked about um, the math one. And actually we already had a math specific webinar that you can find here in the archives as well. Uh, it's a little messy right now. We're actually rearranging our, our archived webinars, um, but you can see what we have loaded up or those of you who need more information again about customizing um, or creating quizzes or your LMSs, this is a great place to go for that. Um, Trying to see what questions are left here. Um, again, I guess a lot, quite a bit of discussion about middle school versus high school science content. So I don't know if you guys had anything else to add to that or if you think we've already covered most of that. Uh, there was one question I had seen earlier too about our earth science. We do not actually have earth science uh, high school on our 2.0 platform. However, we do offer a high school earth science flex book, which you can access by going to earth science and looking at related flex books <clears throat> there. So the, main, the main difference really is the reading level and then the uh, amount of content offered. In a given, in a given course, so it'll be it'll be smaller lessons, typically uh, easier reading and just fewer topics. Um, do you guys have any advice on what parts of lessons do you think might be best for the teacher modeling? Yeah, or is, is this for a modeling curriculum? Uh, I'm, but we'll assume it's for a modeling curriculum. <laughs> and um, so uh, Sonia might be able to speak a little more to this for physics. We have some books that might work a little more specifically to it, but I think our simulations are a really good starting point for modeling curriculums. Yeah, I would agree. I can play click, um, yeah, I can click Heather to the Sims. Um, I think basically for modeling teachers, I just, I'm so glad to hear from you and thanks for, thanks for asking because basically our simulations really were kind of created in the spirit of what modeling, um, you know, models in science, right? And deriving um, the equations and, um, and the methods from these models. So basically um, I can click on, let's say cliff diver, this one's a fun one. Um, so how fast is the cliff diver moving when he hits the water? The idea behind the simulations um, are that from these real world scenarios, you can plot graphs, right? And then you can derive equations and information from the graphs. So you'll see that here, um, you can adjust the height of the cliff and you can turn off and on air resistance, which is nice because it cleans up the model, right? So you don't, you can neglect air um, resistance. And the idea is by pressing play, you get this animation. What, what I like is there's like a nice motion map and then you have this graph. And so the idea being, and I think, um, you know, if, if we're talking about the same kind of type of modeling, like in this, in this, um, graph, right? The slope always has meaning. So it's accelerations. So you could actually derive how fast the uh, cliff diver was falling based on um, calculating the slope in this graph. And there's many different, you know, equations that you could derive regarding kinematics and motion from the graph. So, um, 
so that that would be um, in alignment with um, kind of the idea of using models and deriving information from graphs. Um, modeling for oh. um, other than that, um, I think maybe the I guess the um, theme that we're finding for these um, a lot of these questions, as Heather said, with the earth science at the high school level or the different levels, or maybe if for some reason there's content that you're looking for that we didn't highlight today, please note this that if under the subjects you go to the sciences, we have kind of our core offering. So, for instance. Um, you know, I think the one we didn't show you yet is chemistry. So again, this should now look really familiar. You have your core offering, our Flexbook 2.0, but um, please click on related and that will show you kind of our additional everything else we have. So if there's something that um, for some reason that our core offerings, you're like, where, where is that? Or I wonder if they have that. Please know on all of our um, science branches, you have that related tab that will just open up a whole library of other offerings. Okay, I think Katie's typing in the last answer to the last question. Again, if we missed anything, please email support at ck12.org. Um, thanks to Sonia and Heather and Lauren uh, for all the great information today. And thanks to all of you for joining us. Um, we know it's a busy time of year. You have so much going on. So we really appreciate you taking time to learn about CK12. And I hope that you found something that's going to really um, help save you time and engage your students uh, starting as early as tomorrow. Um, we will see you on the next webinar. Thank you so much.